Jesus will. He gonna fix it after a while. You don't mind standing for the reading of our scripture. We praise God for our music ministry who have ushered us, amen, you can do better than that, have ushered us to the throne of grace. Amen. Amen. The sermon of scripture comes from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verses 5 through 12. From the New International Version, we have these words. The next day, the rulers, the elders, and the teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Annas, the high priest, was there, and so was Cephas, John, Alexander, and others of the high priest's family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them by what power or what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this. You and all the people of Israel it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for life and giving it to us abundantly. We thank you for everything that has ushered us even to this moment. Now I ask that you would hide me behind your cross that all of you and none of me may be seen and heard. In the marvelous name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I could put a tag around this pericope, it, just in case you didn't know it. It's in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Name, a, a word or a set of words by which a person, animal, place, or thing is known, addressed, or referred to. Shakespeare once questioned the value of a name, suggesting that a rose by any other name would smell just as sweet. Yet in the realm of divine and scriptural, names hold profound significance. When I think about that, uh, people, names, you think about what people want to call you. Uh, there is Cassius Clay. But he said he wanted to be called Muhammad Ali. Anna Mae Bulla, she wanted to be called Tina Turner. Steve Land Hardaway Jukis, he wanted to be called Stevie Wonder. Carolyn Johnson, she wanted to be called Whoopi Goldberg. Ferdinand Louis Alcindor, he wished to be called Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Y'all not helping me, so I'm going to give you one right now easy. Sean Corey Carter, and he wanted to be called, see, y'all got that, Jay-Z, look at that. He said, you should have started with Jay-Z. Beyonce, she just don't ask Beyonce. <laughs> Think about your own name. It's so powerful that your brain can hear someone speaking your name in a crowded room. 
I can just be careful. Just call me him. Don't talk about me in this church because I can hear. <laughs> him did it. Don't, don't say Adolphus because I hear that name everywhere I go. Adolphus means noble, majestic. Wolf, I, do, 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 have I lived up to my name? Adolphus. Are you proud of your name? I, I am Adolphus. Took me 54 years to get here, but I am Adolphus. I hated it when I was growing up, but I'm Adolphus now. But within the Bible, names are not mere labels, but are declarations of identity and destiny. Jacob's name means deceiver, and Peter's name means rock, and Isaac's name means laughter, and Moses' name means to be drawn out. Each reveals how names can embody character and purpose. But above all, these stand one name that surpasses time and human frame. And that is the name of Jesus. It is through his name that true power and salvation are mani made manifest. In Genesis, we hear in the first verses that God said, uh, let there be light. And there was light. Think about that statement logically. God named the thing before God created it. You Ponder it. Yeah, hear what I just said? God named it before he created it. See, naming seems a necessary first step toward creation. God names it, then it happens. That's, that's why I'm so glad when God speaks a word over my life. That's all I need God to do is to speak a word over my life, whether it's healing, whether it's restoration or reconciliation. When God speaks a word over my life, the, the Bible tells us that God's word shall never return to God void. Here in our text this morning, it actually is a continuation of Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. There they, they, there they are, Peter and John. They are on their way to pray. They're on their way to the temple, going to the gate. Beautiful. And I love it that they're on their way to pray. Because what happens, beloved, as we've saw our days in the morning, uh, you ought to begin your day with prayer. Because prayer will put you in the proper position. And some of us wonder, how can I make it through this next day? If you don't see, see we, we pray when our things begin to go wrong. We pray when we think we're going to miss the flight. We, we pray when we want to get the job. We, we pray when we're about to get something to eat. But I tell you, if you want to start your day out right, be, before you get out of bed, the moment you open up your eyes, you ought to whisper a prayer. and Thank God for the opportunity that you get to see another day. Because watch this, if God used God's cosmic energy to get you up in the morning, then God's going to use that same energy to sustain you throughout the rest of the day. Here they are on their way to pray. They go to the gate beautiful, and there they see something that is quite ugly. A paralyzed man, a lame man who was there begging. That's what they see on their way to pray. How, how, how many of us have seen somebody that was destitute on your way to church? How many people did you pass on your way to church who were down on their luck and down on bad times? We kept on going because I got to be on time. I got to sing. I got to usher. I got to teach. I ain't got no time for this. <laughs> but here they did. They posed. And all the man wanted was some money. What Peter said to him, silver and gold I have not, but in the name of Jesus, I declare that you would rise up and walk. And that's, beloved, sometimes that's all you got to begin to do is just speak a word. Because sometimes, sometimes you can't give nobody a dime. You can't give nobody a nickel. You can't give nobody a dollar. But what you do have uh, is the name of Jesus to be able to help someone. And here they did. They raised this man, jumped up. He was lame all his life. He was begging all of his life. And these disciples on their way to prayer. And that's what I told you. I, I love a God of interruptions. Because while, that, that, while they're going to do something else, God put something in their way and they had to address it. So you just can't have a one-track mind, just focus on what you're supposed to do. God places some things in our way for us to be involved with. And here at the gate, beautiful, they begin to bring about healing of this paralyzed man. But the ironic thing is that they healed the paralyzed man and then paralyzed the leadership of the church. My God. 
<laughs> Ain't that something? They, they, they brought about healing, but the church leadership did not like it. Created a problem. So now they are paralyzed. Have you ever seen that in any church? I don't, you don't got to name your church. I don't know what church you go to. Oh, I forgot I'm here. But you don't, so, but you don't have to name it. The leadership got paralyzed because that this man was healed. The lead, who's the leadership? The priest? The captain of the temple guard? That's the second most powerful man in Israel? These were the same people, watch this, that arrested Jesus in the garden. They at it again. <laughs> and the Sadducees came to listen to Peter and John. And they did not like what they were hearing. So they had Peter and John arrested and put in jail for doing an act of kindness. Have you, ever, have you ever been put to shame for doing something kind? Doing something right and it didn't turn out right? Our, our text begins on the next day. And here's this question, by what power or in what name did you do this thing? Chapter 4, verse 7. See, this question asks for two responses. What is the source of the healing? In other words, what is the dynamos? That's the power, the dynamite. What is the dynamite? What is the power that you did this? And uh, by what authority, by what name? Uh, onoma, 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 that's name. So they, they, they're concerned about the dunamis and the onoma. They're concerned about the power and the name that it was done. Hmm. And what they're concerned about, because if this man... He's been lame and he's at the gate begging, at the gate beautiful. They want to know, how was this well-known man healed? Have you seen some homeless people in your life, in your neighborhood, on your train route? Like when I drive, I come underneath uh, Broadway before I make the turn on the right by uh, the Chipotle. There's one guy that's always, that, that's his spot. You, 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 if, if you pay attention, Homeless persons, they, they got spots, and they got rules. You know, they're going to beat you down. Don't you come and beg in my spot. This is my spot. So what I'm saying, this, this man had camped there. This was his spot, so everybody knew who he was. And they're concerned that, that wait a minute, how was this well-known man healed, and by what name, and where did the common people get this power from? Because Peter and John, they didn't go to Yale University. They didn't go to Union. They didn't go to Spelman. They, they didn't go to Morehouse. They, in fact, they didn't go to no house. They went to nobody's school. They weren't trained at all. So that's what they said. How can these people, untrained people, heal this familiar man who's been begging all of his life? And watch this. The answer provides the lunching point for our sermon. Watch this. It is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Three observations, and we are on our way. Again, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that the man stands before you healed. First of all, there is inadequacy in my name. In, in my name. See, the, con the human condition is full of limitations. It's full, of, despite our best efforts, skills, and intentions, there, there are things beyond our control uh, and beyond our ability to be able to fix and save. In other words, there's some stuff that you just can't do. Charlemagne the God said it this way, because I'm just, I'm just quoting him because he was right. He's a fool. He's an imbecile, but he was right on this. He said, delusion is a hell of a drug. And there's so many people that are deluded about who they are. I mean, you, I mean, you just laugh. I mean, like, really? You take yourself that seriously? Ain't nobody paying. You are, you are deluded because you have yet to accept your limitations. And y'all don't like that I like, I said, Charlemagne, Clint Eastwood said it better. A man's got to know his limitations. That's what he said in Magnum. <laughs> you you got to know that there are limitations. That your name can't save nobody. And that's what he thinks. Give him my name. They're like, who? I remember we, we were at, uh, when I was in Mount Vernon, at Grace Baptist Church in Mount Vernon, they had uh, a, a big concert that had uh, DMX and the locks were there and some other people. And I was supposed to bring the, the invocation. 
for this rap concert in Memorial Field. So I went to the back gate, the gate, the same gate that, that DMX went in and all the other celebrities. And they said, who are you? I said, I'm Revelation. I said, we don't have no Revelation here. So then they kept on talking and kept on searching. And they said, they're looking for, they said, somebody's at the gate called Revelation. <laughs> I said Reverend Lacey. I didn't say no revelation. That's why they wasn't letting me in because they were looking. They said, we ain't got no revelation. There, there, there's a book in the Bible called Revelation, but he ain't here. So they ready to start the concert. They ain't got nobody there to pray because they looking for revelation. <laughs> Finally sent somebody to come and get me in there. But, but again, knowing the power of a name, my name didn't mean nothing to these people. And in this world, there are people, when you drop your name, you think it means something. Well, I'm going to apply for this job. I'm going to give them my name. Yeah, right, like your name. We, and that's what we take ourselves so seriously. So, again, they brought about healing of this man. And first of all, they recognized this man wasn't healed by himself. And some of us, we, see, we get, to play, we get to play church, especially those of us that sing and those of us that preach and teach, and you might come up and say, Pastor, that was a great sermon. And then I might politely say, yeah, that was the grace of God. And you're like, no, you didn't say that was God. That was you. Because we be lying. Again, we, 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 we're fronting. And so Acts chapter 19 lets us know, keep fronting about God. Acts chapter 19 talks about this Jewish priest by the name of Sceva. And Mr. Sceva had seven sons. And his seven sons kept on talking about, get up in the name of Jesus. They, they were trying to heal people in the name of Jesus, trying to cast out demons in, in the name of Jesus. And, and watch this. One time the demon came out and said, Paul, I know. He said, Peter, I know. <laughs> Jesus, I know. But I don't know you. And, and the demon beat him up. <laughs> Keep playing with God's name and watch what happens. That's one of the Ten Commandments says, do not take the Lord's name in vain. So no, it ain't me. It's, it's, it's the song says, it's the God in me. But really, what happens if we really do believe that our gift is because God is within us? Not because we deserve God. Not because, not, 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 not because we were entitled to it. Again, that's why grace and mercy come into place that none of us are fit. All of us have sinned. All of us are sinning and continue to fall short of the glory of God. So you got to understand the power of this name. There is inadequacy in my name. I like it, but my name can't heal you. But I know it can't. And it can't get you a job either. You keep trying. <laughs> Secondly, there is absurdity. Absurdity in his name. Uh, absurd. It's absurd. Meaning it don't, it don't make sense. See, see, watch this. His name is, listen, listen to what the text really says. He said, by what power and what authority did you do that? He said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So watch this. Jesus, Yeshua, or what we would say Joshua. First of all, it's a common name. Every, every, every child, most children in, in Israel had that name. Because it was a very common name. Just, I mean, just, wow, God going to come in a common name. He should have came like Adolphus, but he came like James. <laughs> William. That's a regular name. I mean, am I right about it? How many Adolphuses you know? Huh? Just two, huh? Just two. Just two. But, you, but, do, but, do, but do, do you know how many Jameses you know? How many Bills you know? And then, and how many Joshua, Yeshua, it's a common name, but what that name meant is that it's going to save God's people. God is salvation. So he had a name of salvation, but it was a regular name that every boy had. It was a, like, wow, is God going to do something? Can God do something spectacular? But then it was Christ, Jesus Christ, and Christ, the anointed one, that's what it is. The anointed one, uh, not only is he anointed, but he is sent. So, so, so the Messiah means sent, or Christ, the same word, means sent, but it also means anointed. So, so not only is this regular name, watch this, anointed, but it is also sent. So there's still a guiding power that God is still involved in it. And that stuff can make sense. 
And that's what I would just say. You know, and we, that's what we just say all the time. In the name of Jesus, we stop there because that's just a bad song. Uh, sometimes I say, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. In the name of Jesus Christ, our soon coming King. In the name of Jesus Christ, who, who, who is our Alpha and Omega. All that stuff sounds great. That, sound, that makes sense. But what's absurd is that he said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. First of all, he wasn't born in Nazareth. He was born in Bethlehem. But he was raised in Nazareth. And there's a problem with Nazareth. Because can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Nazareth was a back wall. It was an armpit of a city. Nobody wanted to go to Nazareth. And that's where Jesus comes from. Jesus not from Jerusalem, not from Rome, not from Athens, not from Addis Baba. No, he, Jesus is from Nazareth. Remember when you were dating? I know it's a long time ago, but remember? And you first time you brought him over or you brought her over and your parents want to know where they from. And you knew there are certain areas of town they better not be from. If they're on, if they're on the wrong side of town, you know, no, you can't, you can't be hanging out with them. They're on the wrong side of town. You can't be doing that. You can't be bringing that boy over here. No, no, no. He casing the house. You can't bring him over here. <laughs> you, you know what they do there? <laughs> no, 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 no. And I'm just saying, Nazareth is not a great place. And so here, our Savior has a regular name coming from a raggedy city. <laughs> but yet there's power in that name. That's the part that I love about God because God don't make sense and God don't try to make, God self makes sense. And that's why I believe there's always hope to even the lowest of us is because when God shows up, God shows up in the worst of conditions with all of God's godness. So let's, let me again remember, he came out of, uh, uh, out of wedlock, born in a, in a stable, and laid itself in the same place where animals are raised, a manger, by a teenage mother, and then he becomes a refugee going to Egypt. Now, you know you can't hide no white boy in Egypt. That way he is. On the run, a life on the run. And now here he is. It's under this name that we're going to be saved. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It, it, it's absurd. It, it doesn't make sense. And let me say this, and I'm about to blow your mind. If you can explain what God is doing in your life, then God is doing nothing. Let me say it for this side. God don't make sense. And if you can explain what God is doing in your life, then God ain't doing nothing. But all I know, when God does something, it don't make sense. Because God can make your enemies take care of you. Huh? God can make downtime great times. Huh? God can take you out at the same time, bring you in. God can take you down and at the same time lift you up. God does not make any sense. God operates in the realm of the ridiculous, of using people who don't make sense. So again, first of all, there is inadequacy in my name. My name is not powerful enough to do anything. Secondly, there is absurdity in his name. His name does not make sense. But let's pay attention. It says, by what power or by what name did you do this? They answered, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Lastly, there is authority in his name. He has authority in his name. As I said to do the marriage ceremony, Mark and Joy, we concluded the ceremony by saying, by the authority invested in me, by Almighty God, I pronounce that you are man and woman, husband and wife. I said, by, by the authority that's placed in me. In other words, Somebody had to give me authority because everybody can't marry. I had to get authority to be able to do so. And I want to let you know there is authority in the name of Jesus. 
See, the authority is the power to give orders or make a decision. The power or right to direct or control someone or something. See, that, that's what power is. That's what it is. That's what authority is, excuse me. But then, because we are in relationship with God, God gives us a power of attorney. A power of attorney is the authority that is given to another person so as to act on behalf of an issuer in legal or in other matters. In, in other words, I, 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 I cannot create healing on myself, but, but I can do healing in the name of Jesus. <laughs> I, I, I can't speak prosperity in your life uh, in the name of Jesus because what God has allowed me and God has allowed you is we get to be co-laborers with Christ. And, and when we're co-laborers with Christ, God gives us authority to act on God's behalf. Oh, you missed what I said. You got to be careful who you curse and who you bless because God has given you that authority. So don't you go around cursing what God has blessed. You got to bless what God has blessed unless God take your authority away from you. See, 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 see. And that's, that's, that's what happens now, beloved. We get so casual with the name of Jesus. That's the problem. That, do, you, do you know how much, how powerful that name is? If you knew how much powerful that name is, you just wouldn't be cavalierly saying it. But if you really knew the power of Jesus' name, uh, once you said that name, you expect something to be able to happen. Because my Bible tells me that demons tremble uh, at that name. Uh, my Bible tells me that there's power in the name uh, of Jesus. I, I don't play around. Watching that childhood show, uh, movie Disney, Disney show, uh, Lion King. And then remember Mufasa, and they and they had the little the little the little uh, scallywags, uh, the hyenas. Thank you very much. The hyenas up there, and they like playing. Say his name, Mufasa, Mufasa, Mufasa. <laughs> yeah, just, just, just tease it, cause they didn't think it was. But when when you say Mufasa's real name, you were able to see the roar of this giant, this 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 giant lion that's now afraid of everybody. But they were teasing, playing with his name. And I'll tell you that's what's wrong with our churches today, is that we play with the name of Jesus. Uh, we just use the name of Jesus to a cosign to any mess that we want to do. But, but I want you to know when we take serious the name of Jesus, homes will be saved. When we take serious the name of Jesus, lives will be transformed. When we take serious the name of Jesus, finances will begin to expand. Why? Because there's power power, wonder-working power in the name of Jesus. And that's what we got to recognize. His name is above all names. And that's why he is worthy to be praised. We say, oh, hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall, bring forth the royal diadem, and crown him Lord of all. There, 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 there is a name. I love to hear. I, I love to sing his praise. It, it sounds like music to my ear. It's the sweetest name on all oh, how I love Jesus. That's, I want you to know that they just say Jesus and believe that there is power. They are armed with nothing. They didn't got no, what, watch this. Think about this. It says silver and gold I have not. They were broke. I told y'all that. The disciples were broke. And that's a frustrated position to be broke. <laughs> I, don't like, I don't like being around broke people. <laughs> and I ain't talking about finances. Some people got the broken remote control, broken chair. <laughs> don't sit there. <laughs> broke plate. Just, just broke I don't want to be around broke people. And, and that's what Jesus was around broke people. And here these broke people are going to pray. And he didn't lie. He says, the man didn't ask him for healing. The man asked for something to get something to eat. He asked for some money. And Peter didn't lie. Peter said, I, I ain't got no job either. <laughs> he said, but what I do got is a testimony. <laughs> 
You missed what I just said. Uh, in the name of Jesus, get up. That, that's what I want to let you know right now. You don't have to stay broke. You don't have to stay in your rough situation. In the name of Jesus, get up. In the name of Jesus, claim your victory. In the name of Jesus, claim your promise. In the name of Jesus, claim your prosperity. In the name of Jesus, be who God has called you to be. Armed with nothing, they brought about transformation. And I wish you take the name of Jesus with you wherever you go. Watch God change things. So again, in the name of Jesus, there is inadequacy. It's not my name. This, this, this is not my faith. In the name of Jesus, there is absurdity because it, it doesn't make sense. It's a simple name from a raggedy town. But watch this. <laughs> there is authority in his name. And God has subjected everything on heaven and earth under his name. So when you speak his name in the hospital, in the cemetery, in graduation schools, in, in the banks, or wherever you are, watch the power and authority of God operate in your life. This is the word of God for the people of God.